Intercal 3D has the ability to perform steel beam design, and we'll use this simple model to take a look at how that's done. We won't go into details on model building here, but it's important to know that the model needs to be able to perform an analysis. So that means members have to have sections and materials, supports and loads have to be assigned, and it needs to be stable. And we have that here in this model, we'll see in, in just a minute. The one thing that I would like to point out is load combinations for steel design. So when I open the load combinations screen, we can see that we have the default load combination that always comes along for the ride. But more importantly is that I've generated a series of IBC combinations from right here in the program, and that those are set to yes for running, they're set to yes for P-delta analysis, and they're set to yes for steel design. So we're in good shape there. The next thing that we would like to do is get some current analysis results. This will take about four seconds or so to run. And once that's done, we can click close and we're in good shape to come into steel design. The steel materials button lists all the materials that have been defined in the model. The only one that I've actually applied is the A992, but what's important here is to see that this is where we can establish the value for FY and FU that will be used in the steel design. I like those two values, so I don't need to make any changes. I'll just click cancel. The steel design criteria button opens some options, the first of which is also called steel design criteria. In this dialog, the important thing is that it allows us to specify the desired design code. And then there are a bunch of uh, other design criteria that are available to help control the design. We won't go through all of those, but just know that those are there to help you refine. Back to steel design criteria, the next item is steel member design criteria. You can create as many steel member design criteria as you need to in order to define uh, the designs that you want out of the model. In this case, since we are only designing a single member, we can get away with just a single steel member design criteria, but we're able to provide meaningful labels. This is where we can tell the program what sections we would like to have tried. So notice this is the nomenclature for indicating that we want it to try to find something in the W14 or W16 family. And then there are controls to indicate whether the frame is subject to sway in the X and Y direction, whether the member is continuously braced for flexural analysis or what the unbraced length is, values of CB, values of K and L, and even a maximum capacity ratio that would be permissible. So I like everything as it's set here. I'll just click cancel and come back up to steel design criteria. The next item is steel section pool. This is a way that you can create a list of very specific sections that you want the program to try. You can draw from right here in the AISC table, but I'm going to just rely on the W14 and W16 family that I gave it previously. So we'll just cancel back out of section pool. And the last item in steel design criteria is exclude steel elements. So this is the way that you can include or exclude specific elements from the steel design. What I've done previously is I've excluded everything and then I just came back and included this one member in the foreground. The next button is steel member design properties and this is just a convenient way to apply a previously defined steel design criteria uh, design exclusion status um, to the selected entities out there in the model. But I've already taken care of that, so I'll just click cancel here. Then there's the steel member input button. It opens up a dialog of the same name. This is just a tabular view of the same information, so it lists all of the members in the model. It indicates what design criteria has been assigned and then the include or exclude status for that member. I only want a design for that member number one, so everything is set just fine here, and I'll click cancel. So that's all the input that's required. At this point, we can tell the program to go ahead and perform the steel design. 
that's uh, over and done with in a flash. And then we can just say close. And now we can start to take a look at design results. So steel design results opens a table that gives us the member ID, the member length, the section that was tried. Notice here the design status and the critical ratio. So we have a design problem that we need to address there. And then some information about the design, like the controlling load combination, the location where the controlling section was found, uh, the controlling axial and bending ratio, the controlling shear ratios for each direction, the flexion information, and then some loads associated with those, uh, with that condition. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to fix this beam so that it actually works. Notice this drop down arrow here beside the W1422. If I click that, we can see a list of other W14s and W16s, again, because I chose the 14 and 16 family, and notice that they're listed in economical order by weight. So the next thing that I would do is just click on the next heaviest beam, which is the 1626. Now, we see everything go yellow, and there's a reason for that. There's um, a situation here where we have a little bit of a mix and match because we're using analysis results based on a W1422 to perform design checks and calculate this ratio on a W16 by 26. So this is a good, uh, say, initial look to see that it's hopeful that that would work. And if we would like to test that thoroughly, what we would do then is say, let's go ahead and update the sections which means that it'll push this W16 by 26 section back into the model. But this warning reminds us that updating the sections will invalidate the current analysis and design results. Do we want to continue? Well, yes, that's our intent. So now we know that we have a 1626 here instead of a 1422, but in order to be complete about things, we need to reanalyze because that change in stiffness can affect the distribution of forces and therefore the design loads that are used. All right, so now we've reanalyzed. I'll click close, come back to uh, steel design. Now we don't need to work back through the parameter settings again, but we do need to tell it that we want it to perform the steel design again, and then click close, and then we can come to steel design results. And here it's showing us that the 1626 did, in fact, work with a ratio of about 0.94. So that's great information. While we're here on the steel design results um, screen, it's also important to know that the program offers a detailed view of the calculation procedure with this button here. So if I click Show Calculation Procedure, we'll see that open up in a browser for this particular member all of the detailed information on the input specific code references individual calculations and so on all available for us to print if need be but at least to review okay so i'll close that tab and then i'll say cancel here uh, that was steel design results. Now, steel design tools uh, is handy to know that we have a K calculator and some quick uh, checks on steel sections and some a tool for design, uh, more like utilities than anything else, so not necessarily a part of the ribbon workflow. And then the last item is the unity check. And what's nice about this is that if we click unity check, we can see, uh, based on the blue color, that the status of the member is OK. When the member was no good, uh, this would have been shown in red. So hopefully that's a helpful look at the tools that are available for steel beam design in Intercalc 3D.